Okay, so in case um, Joe can't edit it, yeah, that's misunderstanding, sorry, part three of the lecture. Now, let's go back to page 582 where we left off the last, um, the last lecture. On the heels of that, he thought, my God, what am I doing? And that's so great, right, when some of us, um, we make mistakes, okay, we uh, go out and do something we weren't supposed to do, and then halfway through, you're like, or at the end, you're like, what did I just do? What am I doing? Okay, but it's this idea to be human, and that's what it takes for us to be human. Okay, we do make mistakes, we do, like this guy right here, we do, um, you know, smoke the forbidden cigarette, but what are we doing? Why is he doing this? He knew the consequences. I mean, he was told, hey, one, two, three, four, five. These are the steps that are good, that that um we we're going to take. These are the consequences, but he did it anyway. And how human is that? That we know the consequences of our actions, good or bad, and we still do it. Yeah, humanity, y'all. In one sentence, my God, what have I done? Cindy, I'm home. He called. No answer. Cindy, where are you? The phone rang. He pounced on it. Hello, Cindy. Hello, Mr. Morrison. Donati said. Seems we have a small business matter to attend to. Would five o'clock be convenient? Have you got my wife? Yes, indeed. Look, let her go. I, it won't happen again. It was a slip. It was just a slip. That's all. I only had three drags, and for God's sakes, it didn't even taste good. That's a shame. I'll count on you for five, shall I? Please, he said close to tears. Please, but he was speaking to a dead line. All right. Like I said, here right now, right, we have... The anticipation of horror going on to Tara because you knew what's going to happen to her. If you look at 583, Tara, remember, is the fear of dismemberment or harm. He looked in the room. Cindy was in there looking bewilderedly. Cindy, Cindy Morrison called miserably. Cindy, they, she can't hear you. Donati said, it's a one-way glass. Well, let's get it over with. It was a very small slip. I believe 30 seconds should be enough. Junk? Junk pushed the button with one hand and kept the pistol jammed firmly into Morrison's back with the other. It was the longest 30 seconds of his life. Right? So that's terror. Okay? And it's not only the fear or dismemberment of yourself. Okay, that's something that I, that I should have brought up, but I want you all to, to remember that and think about that. Terror is not just that you fear something for yourself. You fear it for other people. Okay? And the, thing I, the reason I like this story is because how perfect is that? Okay? We can handle horrific things happening to us, but when it's happening to somebody we love or we care for, that's that's the rub. That's that's the rub. That you have no control over. That's the, that's the frightening part. Okay, let's look at 585. By the way, how wonderful is the wife who just sort of says, okay, it's okay, we're going to get through this together. All right, that's wonderful. That's, that's true love there. I don't know, Joe, if I got you electrocuted, would you put up with it? I probably would. All right, well, that's cool. That's true love, too. 585. Okay. What happens to a lot of people when they try to give um, something up, particularly smoking, is they gain weight. And we see that this happens to Morrison in 585. <clears throat> okay. When they entered the small room, Donati said, Don't look so nervous. No one's going to bite you. Step over here. He looks at the scale. Listen, I've gained a little weight. Yes, 73% of our clients do. Step up, please. Okay, fine, you can step off now. How tall are you, Mr. Morrison? 5'11", okay. Donati pulls out a card. Two. Well, that's not too bad. I'm going to write you a, a, a script for some highly illegal diet, diet pills. Use them sparingly and according to directions. And I'm going to set your maximum weight at 182. How does that sound? As this is December 1st, I expect you the first of every month for a weigh-in. No problem if you can't make it, as long as you call in advance. And what happens if I go over 182? Donati smiled. We'll send someone to your house to cut off your wife's little finger. You can leave through this door, Mr. D Mr. Morrison. Have a nice day. Okay, remember that. Okay, if he gains weight, his wife will get her finger, her little finger cut off. And if you go to the beginning of the story where everything was normal, you'll remember that his friend is a little heavier than usual. Hmm, okay, that's kind of creepy. All right, so, eight months later... Morrison runs into a crony from the Larkin Studios at Dempsey's Bar. Morrison is down to what Cindy proudly calls his, baby, his fighting weight, 160. He works out, 167. He works out three times a week and looks as fit as a whipcord. The crony from Larkin, by comparison, looks like something that the cat dragged in. Crony, Lord, how did you ever stop? I'm locked into this damn, the, this damn habit tighter than Tilly. 
The crony stubs his cigarette out with real revulsion and drains his scotch. Morrison looks at him speculatively, takes out a small white business card out of his wallet. He puts in the bar between them. You know, he says, these guys changed my life. Okay. All right, so 12 months later, he gets the bill. They charge him 50 cents for the electricity. Cheers. 20 months later. Hey, everything looks great, right? If we stop right here, he pays the $5,000.50. Everything looks great. This is a happy ending for our protagonist, right? 20 months later. Quite by accident, Morrison and his wife meet the Jimmy McCanns at the Helen Hayes Theater. Introductions are made all around. Jimmy looks as good, if not better, than he did that day at the airport terminal so long ago. Morrison has never met his wife. She is pretty, and the radiant way plain girls sometimes have when they are very, very happy. She offers her hand, and Morrison shakes it. There's something odd about her grip, and halfway through the second act, he realizes what it was. The little finger on her right hand is missing. Okay, so just when you think, okay, the worst things are over, the little boy isn't going to get beaten up or electrocuted, Stephen King hits you with this lightning bolt. Okay, and it leaves you thinking that, okay, that's, this, that's horror, right? That's the anticipation. You know something happened, and it just hits you with, okay, so that, that can happen. This isn't um, just an empty threat. Okay. I do like to assign, as I said, this story, okay, because it is very psychological and it's very simple. Okay. And the best terror is psychological terror. It messes with your head. Okay, it's not necessarily coming out and having people <clears throat> stab you to death or running through a campsite or drowning, whatever. It's not that. This is this is very good and it's very, very difficult to write this properly. Okay. As I said, this is one of Stephen King's better ones, and I chose it because it is very relevant. Okay, how hard is it to get rid of an addiction? Um, if you're if you're addicted to something, what would it take for you to quit? And according to this, it would just take violence against somebody you love. Okay, I really hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, if you want to read more of his, let me know. I will post a few other ones online if you'd like. Okay, and finally, the last thing we're going to go over right now is We Ate the Children Last uh, by Jan Martel, who wrote the um, Life of Pi book. Okay. okay, so this one, this one's just, this one's just horror all around. This one was pretty disgusting when I read it. Okay, um... Okay, so this is the second short story we're going to go over. Um, the human trial was on patient D, a 56-year-old male, single and childless, who was suffering from colon cancer. He was a skeletal man with white, bloodless skin who could no longer ingest even clear fluids. He was aware that this case was terminal, and he waived all rights to legal redress, redress should the procedure go wrong. His discovery was astounding. Two years after the operation, he ate six lunches, lunch meals in one sitting. He gained 24 kilos in two weeks. Clearly, his liver, pancreas, and gallbladder, the source of his greatest worry, had adapted to the transplant. Okay, so um, the only side effect known was concerning his diet. R patient D rapidly came to dislike sweet dishes, then spicy, then cooked food altogether. He began to eat bananas and oranges without peeling them. Okay, this story begins in media's rest. Meaning that you just sort of get thrown into the middle of a story. You don't know what's going on. Okay, Critters Incorporated tells you, uh, Terminal JFK, guys are smoking. Well, okay, you know this. This one, you don't quite know what's it, what, what is he talking about? What does this guy have? Okay, he has colon cancer. What experiment? Um, okay, we don't quite know what it is. But at the end, you realize that he has been given some sort of exper some sort of maybe operation, and that the operation was successful to cure his cancer. Okay, those of you all who are my medical majors, my science majors, know that it's very that you technically can't cure this. You can treat it, but you can't cure cancer, right? Um, which is what makes it so dangerous. But the French medical team, but great, right? The French medical team felt vindicated. Until then, the success rate of few a uh, fool. Organ xenografts was zero. Okay, there you go. All transplants of animal organs to humans, the hearts, livers, and bone marrow of baboons, the kidneys of chimpanzees, had failed. The only real achievement in the, in the field was the grafting of pigs' heart valves to repair human hearts, and to a lesser extent, of pig skins to burn victims. Okay, very true, by the way. Pig skin and our skins are quite similar. Okay, um, Pig skins actually will get sunburned, which is why they... Um, cover themselves in mud, okay, so in fact for the day. 
Um, what they're doing here, what the French medical team is doing, of course, we would think, hey, you know, they're trying to cure cancer. This is great. Um, others, other critics have said they're messing with nature. Okay. And if you ever see any of these stories that someone messes with me, nature, for example, in a Frankenstein, what Victor Frankenstein does to the creature, um, she'll mess with you right back. Okay, nature does not like to be screwed around with. Okay, something we should probably learn. Okay, but right now what they're doing is they um, have a solution, right? They have the French medical team have found a solution to cancer. Pigs. Look at the bottom of that chapter of that paragraph. The French were certain that their simple solution to the double problem using the digestive system of a smaller pot-bellied pieces of pig, pig would become the stuff of scientific legend like Newton's apple. We have put into this man a source of energy, both compact and powerful, a Ferrari engine, boasted the leader of the medical team very pridefully, right? Very, very pridefully. Okay, so that sounds great, right? They cured cancer. They get part of the pig and put it in the person. A couple of things I do want to tell you all about pigs. Pigs are very smart, okay? They're omnivores and they eat everything. A few years ago, there was a case in Toronto uh, where a man would kidnap prostitutes, kill them, and feed them to his pigs. He would then take the pigs, slaughter them, and give the meat to his uh, neighbors. Okay, it's really gross. You should look it up. The pigs eat everything. It's the danger of being around pigs. My grandmother would tell us that when she was uh, living on the farm, that you would have to be very careful and clean um, the children's faces well before they slept because the problem was that the rats would come in. Pigs could come in and eat them. Pigs will screw you up. Stay away from pigs. Stay away from pigs, y'all. Yeah. They're scary. Okay, but, hey, cancer's cured. Patient D was monitored closely. When he asked about what he ate, he was evasive. A visit to his apartment three months later after the operation revealed that his kitchen was barren. He finally confessed that he, w that he went out at night and picked up the garbage. Nothing pleased him more, he said, than to gorge himself on putrid sausages, rotten fruit, moldy brie, baguettes gone green, skids and carcasses, and other soured leftovers and kitchen waste. Okay, that's a weird change, right? Why? He's, and he's fine, right? He tells you right here, his hemoglobin was good, blood pressure is good, everything looks great. Except that really weird food. Alright, regulatory approval came swiftly. The procedure replaced chemotherapy as a standard treatment for all cancers of the digestive tract that did not respond to radiation. Right? Great! Okay, uh, the Good Samaritans, the Bon Samaritan, a lobby group for the poor thought to apply this wondrous medical solution to a social problem. The poor often have unwholesome diets at the cost of both their health and to the state, which had to spend so much on medical care. What better, more visionary remedy than a procedure that in reducing food budgets to nothing created the paragons of fitness, right? No more now nutrition, deficit, yes, perfect. Okay, if it works for one person, it's going to work for the rest of the population, except that any person who's ever had an experiment or worked in a science experiment will tell you that you have to perform several steps. You're just not going to do it right once and say it's going to happen. It's going to be correct every time. Okay? Okay? You go on, you see that um, people who aren't ill decide to do it, right? Because, hey, you know, we're going to save the, the environment, the young and bohemians, the chic and the radical, all those wanting to change in their life, right? Yes, let's do this. Let's get this surgery done, right? Awesome. Except... If you look at the third paragraph, little was made at the time of a report by the Société Protecte du Animal of the surprising drop of the number of stray dogs and cats. Garbage became sought after commodity. Unscrupulous racketeers began to sell it. Dumps became dangerous places. Garbage collectors were assaulted. Okay, so you see that suddenly you're realizing there's something not right here. Okay, something is wrong. What is it? This is a very wonderful tale, right, of horror and terror. You go back and forth. You're like, okay, at first, what's the anticipation, the horror, what's going to happen, the terror? Where are all these cats and dogs going? Okay, if you look at the, the paragraph, the old people began vanishing without a trace. Mothers who had turned away momentarily were finding their baby carriages empty. The government reacted swiftly. In a matter of three days, the army descended upon every one of the operated without discrimination between the law-abiding criminal. The paper, Le Cachon Libre, which is uh, the free pig, 
tried to put up protests, but the, the police raided their offices and only a handful of copies escaped destruction. These were horrible scenes during the roundup. Neighbors denouncing neighbors, children being separated from families, men, women, and children being stripped in public to look for telling scars, summary executions of people who tried to escape. Okay, internment camps were set up. Okay, so now suddenly there's something wrong here. So what is happening with the um, humans who had this novel operation done? It, it worked for one person, except that suddenly it doesn't work for them. And that's when the, right, the terror comes in of they're eating people. No provisions were made for the food of these camps. The story was the same in all of them. First, that they, the, the detainees ate their clothes and went naked. Then the weaker men and women disappeared. Then the rest of the women. Then more of the men. Then we ate those we loved the most. The, la the last known prisoner was an exceptional brute by the name of Jean Porti. After 41 days without a morsel of food except his own toes and ears, he and 30 hours of sense of screaming, he died. Okay, so now it hits you. They're eating themselves. This guy ate his toes and his ears and... That's what he decided to eat because he was so hungry right now. This, this is, this is horror. This is disgusting. You're This is, I like, it's the fear of the bizarre. Cannibalism is one of those taboos. Remember taboo? One of those taboos that really people don't like to, they don't like to go into cannibalism. We feel very uncomfortable, right? You all know that if, um, you, if cannibalism occurs, you have to be careful what organ or what part of the body you eat. Because if you eat the brain, you can um, develop a disease called Kirchfeld's Jacob disease. All right, I escaped. I still have a good appetite, but there is mortal. There is a mortal rot in this country that even I can't digest. Everyone knew what happened and how and where, but to this day, everybody knows, but no one talks about it, and no one is guilty. I must live with that. Okay, and there's that, this idea, right? We think that in all stories that we read that good old triumph over evil, but then he says right here, everyone knows what happened, okay, everyone was guilty, but now nobody wants to talk about it, it's kind of under the table, so what happened to all these thousands of people, you know, they can always say it's just an experiment gone wrong, and that was it, okay, so this is, this is scary, okay, as I said, um, one of the tropes in these novels for these short stories is when you mess up with mother nature or you screw around with her, she's going to screw right back with you. Okay, and here is the essence of a, of a short story that is terror going into horror, right? And I want you all to think about that because this starts off very normally, right? It's a medical experiment, and how great would it be to find a cure for cancer? Okay, you found it right here. This is great, right? What can possibly go wrong? Oh, wait, it, lets us, it, it leads us to eat people, and especially men, women, and then, of course, we eat the children last. So I hope you all enjoyed this one as well. As I said, I tried to choose two stories that would be interesting. One that goes from here, from um, horror, from terror to horror, and the other one that goes from horror to terror. Um, I hope it made sense to you all. And um, as I said, oh boy, sorry. So as I said for you all for next time, remember you do have homework. Okay, you do have to do your discussion. Okay, so do remember you have to do, work on your discussion and the reader response is on. Um, horror and terror that is up as well. Okay, so go over this lecture, your readings, your notes. Um, if you have any questions, you can always text me. Uh, so yeah, so I will see you guys Wednesday. Okay, take care of yourselves. Okay, remember don't drink, don't drink and drive, and stop hoarding toilet paper. Okay, we all need toilet paper. Okay, wait. Okay. Say bye. If you guys want to say bye. Okay, you're done.